SR near Kingaroy, um, and there's a really nice uh, place if you're in Australia. There's a really nice place uh, to park about 20 kilometres outside of Kingaroy to the south towards Dolby, and it's a just a just a beautiful sort of an area. It's it's only um, you're only allowed to stay 24 hours or 20 hours, and there's a lot of these. It's got its own toilet. Um, I think there's a shower in there too, which I may be visiting in the morning. Um, I've just driven about 100 k's, and uh, it's been fun. I, I love a drive. I, I'm, I'm insane about driving. I just and I love driving her. She's she's got my heart. I'm in love with her. Look at that beautiful car. Look at that lovely car. It's not even a car. It's a house. It's my house. Um, and uh, so, yeah, this isn't a bad place. It's pretty packed, pretty packed considering it's cold here now, and that's the reason why I sort of uh, moved on. I stayed for a few days down near Dolby, um, but uh, the nights were getting a bit too cold, so I'm heading up north, and I'm just going to take my time. I'll stay here one night, um, then go to one day, and uh, I already, I'm an old hand. I've, I've uh, been circling this, this, I've been doing a circuit, um, in the Queensland area and it's really nice because you get to know places you know the first time I came here I mean I didn't know where to go and you just accidentally come upon places and when you're driving you sort of don't know where you're going and you feel lost and alone and it's getting dark and and uh, there's a certain misery to it you know like this is it this I don't have a home to go to I've got to find a place to park that's safe and um, convenient and uh, as internet and all that sort of stuff but now I know you know I've got I've stayed here once before and uh, on the way I just remembered it and I saw it come up and turned off and and here I am and it's got a creek down there uh, with a bridge and there's a small creek but you know it's Australia it's not a beautiful river like in in the US the uh, the people that go camping and and uh, and uh, the nomads there there uh, uh, a lot cheap RV living. I watch a lot of his stuff. He's great. He's he's like Jesus in the desert. That guy, uh, Moses. Moses in the desert. Um, I love that. Uh, I love a lot of his episodes. Um, but the the lakes are beautiful, you know. And Europe. Europe is like that too. Even England and and uh, Scotland. There's some beautiful scenery there. But Australia is uh, it's dry. It's a dry continent. It's an island. You know. It's don't be fooled that it's a continent. It's not a continent. A continent has many countries inside, and you know it's a it's a whole thing. You know, Australia is just big, but it's a big island. It's it's uh, full of Australians, um, and you know it's mostly desert. And um, so when I when you go, I don't even bother going down to water spots or, or places with water because it'll be brown, it'll be rancid. I don't know. It'll or it'll be almost empty. Um, it's just dry here you can see by the trees the trees are you know struggling all through even though it's quite green here compared to some places it's quite green look at that. look at the girth of that tree it's pretty pretty uh, that's that's great in Australian standards because a lot of the trees are uh, when you go out further west um, a lot of the trees are quite dismal looking and even scary looking they're sort of twisted and you know, just trying to get a little bit of water, the poor things, but, and there's a lot of fires and stuff too, so. Um, but with this place, um, Australia, uh, it's the beach, it's the beach capital, but if you go inland, you don't get those wonderful European forests, those alpine regions in the US and northern, northern US, Montana and Canada and all that sort of beautiful uh, fishing streams and the water's crystal clear and I mean I've watched with um, with uh, jealousy you know with uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, but Australia is beautiful in its own way it is beautiful in its own way and um, it has a lot of uh, well it's got a lot of it's it's ancient it's an ancient land it's a sunbaked land and um, when you get past that and, and you sort of initially you might if you're European or, or American and you came to a continent like this initially you'd be struck by how how dismal the vegetation is in terms of um, in terms of uh, vigor um, I mean there's plenty of vegetation but it's just it's not it's not flamboyant I mean it's not it, it you know you know what I'm trying to say anyway and um, so when I see water places like that I don't even bother going there's probably mosquitoes down there 
Um, it's not a, a fresh running water stream that's cleaned out and, and moving all the time. So um, that's that's why I don't even bother. But this is a nice spot. It's great. There's no mosquitoes or flies here, surprisingly. But uh, it is getting a bit cooler now. Um, we're coming into the wet. We are in the wet season, um, so there will be rain. As you can see, there's plenty of clouds up there. There's quite kind of dark clouds right up there, and they are just going to pummel down. There's some over there too. Look at that one. Look at that beautiful cloud. So the sun's about to go down, and I'm about to do some trading, as I always do every night, every weeknight. Um, but I did a bit of work today too, uh, before I drove. Um, I did this cut-off thing here, which was fun. Um, I've been meaning to do that for, because I just threw this together, this van, in like uh, ha half an afternoon, really. Um, and I borrowed, borrowed the old man's circular saw and, and cut things to pieces, to, to size, and um, made myself what I wanted to make. And what I really needed was a place to sit and, and uh, a desk. So it fit, fits a laptop, which sits there. I put it there because otherwise it'll slide off um, when I'm driving. Put this little thing here, and I just had this had this idea that I've got to cut that because I've been I've caught my hip on that three or four times. But now when I get in, because this is where I mainly sit, I don't sit here. Um, my legs go there when I sleep. But this is my seat, and it's my sofa, and um, it's my it's my couch, and it's also my place where I uh, rest out. Those pillows have got to get washed. Inside there, there's there's just sponge, so it's not dirty. It's not like it's not like those down feather goose when sweat gets in the goose feathers and stuff. This is just sponge, little squares of sponge. So I can take those out and give it a wash. I'm looking for a laundry, and there hasn't been a laundry within 200 kilometres. A laundrette, a coin-operated laundry. So I've got a whole bunch of clothes that I um, a whole bunch of clothes that I need to wash. And this is full. My laundry bag is absolutely full of laundry, laundry that needs doing. Um, so I cut that, and I also put a because I've been losing bits and pieces, and and the camera's been falling on the floor, um, just dropping off the floor, and I've been forgetting my mouse, and it, you know, when I take off, it drops. I just forget it. I'm supposed to put everything on the on the bed, and then when I stop somewhere, I can put it back on the thing. So what I did. On the desk, it's not a bad desk, really, is it? Look, look how solid it is. Hey, OFAB built, built by OFAB. It's simple. I just had these offcuts, and I went, oh, I know how to do this. And I put a little piece in there, and that's what gives it the strength in there. That that's where it's attached to the to the car. I don't know if that can be seen or not, um, but there's a little piece there. I drilled in. I drilled in that way, and then I drilled in that way to make it fairly solid and I'm not going to put anything heavy on that anyway um, but yeah so I've, I found this container and I drilled it into position there's three screws three tiny screws in there and uh, now all my junk all my junk can sit there and I don't have to pile it all on the bed and then pile it all back one by one there's seven items me, me thing me, me keys um, I used to put my keys here but now everything will just go in that box there and it won't go anywhere see this is just travel 100 kilometers and Nothing's fallen or, or, or uh, broken or... So yeah, that's that's good and that is A plus and that is A minus because it looks a bit ugly. But I need to put a box in here where I can put, you know, all this stuff because this stuff keeps getting my under my feet, which I don't like. Um, so I'm thinking of cutting this up, this box here, cutting it um, and, and grabbing, cutting it in half taking it to half and cutting it about here and then putting it screwing it somehow into there so all these items can sit into that uh, can sit into that uh, into the uh, ledge there so yeah um, what else have I done nothing I've put some oil in the car an update about my overheating problem um, since I had that flat I told you about when I was making the um, bolognese, fettuccine bolognese that night. I told you about how I had a flat tyre and I've got a new tyre on the roof. Well, uh, it turns out um, <laughs> that uh, my tyres were a little flat and when they changed the tyre, they put on 
they you know they put they gave me the, the numbers too uh, per pounds per square inch 48 in the front and 40 in the rear so now I know that I can check them all the time now so I didn't even know what the correct poundage was I you know so I didn't so the tires were a bit flat and they were dragging on the motor and the motor is working too hard and that's why you see so always check your tires find out what your tire pressure is because when when I got out of that K, when I got out of that uh, tire shop and and started rolling, the thing rolled better. The whole thing, you know. I thought, man, I got a lot of weight here. That's why it's so. That's why it's so difficult to get going. Um, the motor's struggling, but no, actually, it's because the tires were a little bit flat. Not flat, flat, but they were they were spongy, and therefore not getting enough um, buoyancy, not getting enough traction. So that's good news. Um, as long as I keep the oil topped up and the water topped up um, that that thermostat shows that it's just under half which is perfect just under half is perfect but uh, when it goes over half there's some problem there's got to be some problem if, if there's water and if there's oil uh, there should be no problem and that's that's what I was going through that day and I was stressing out about it and uh, then I had my pasta pasta dinner speaking of food I'm not going to have anything to eat tonight I've eaten last night a, and I'm ref, refeeding it's called I refed last night and the night before with sausages and um, pickles and salad and stuff like that. And I showed you my keto haul and I ate some of that. There's still some food left, but I won't I won't bother with it for um, two more days. I'll get another 40 hour, 48 hours in. Maybe I'll go to five days again. I don't know. I'll see how I feel. I'm not committed to either either uh, either activity. Uh, if I do do 48 hours. That, that's fine with me if I feel like eating but um, I wouldn't mind see I've got I've got this keto rash that's come back and under the armpits it's pretty ugly now it's it's before it was just itchy um, now under both armpits there's these small they look like mosquito bites they're not they're dried out um, I won't show it it's just it's it'll go away in due course um, it looks like it's over it's finished with the um, and that's the keto rash is because you don't uh, you're not getting carbohydrates so at least you know you're doing something right uh, <laughs> at least you know because it's a known it's a known uh, uh, symptom that you get uh, keto rash when you don't eat uh, your normal diet of carbs um, so when you cut out all those sugars what happens is um, you just you just end up you just end up being um, uh, being subject to these small ailments like the um, uh, insomnia and things like that but anyway let's 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 just marvel at the beauty of the of the late 90s what they built in the late 90s look how beautiful it is not plastic it's strong it's 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 reliable I mean I'm so in love with this car I just although if I had more money I'd probably buy something flashy but uh, no never and this hitchhiker Henry he is still here all I did was put a blob of um, a blob of uh, silicon on there and he is still holding on so he can stay as long as he's he's welcome for as long as he wants to stay there um, I don't think any good thing is going to knock him off because he's been there now for nearly a month or three weeks at least four weeks, no a month um, he's been there and the meat has uh, I guess disintegrated or maybe insects have eaten it or something but there's no meat anymore in there so uh, it's a clean skull now, but I still wouldn't touch it for for uh, pity's sake. I wouldn't even go near it, actually. But it looks cool, I reckon. It could I could do with a bigger one, like a bull's head or something. That'd be really noticeable. But you know, it just reminds you of uh, <laughs> you know, death. Death. Death is for everyone, so it's going to happen. You know, there's no two ways about it. But uh, uh, so. That's just it's probably don't need to remind people, but uh, I've got that on there because I'm a kid and I'm an idiot, and that's just on there. I don't know. I just feel better with it on there. It, it's almost like a lucky charm. So, and here's I bought the car with this damage, so I don't know what that was—a shopping trolley or something. But I hit a poor wombat here about two weeks ago, and the, the, I went right over it. He was a big one, and he was crawling across the road. I, don't, I had no time to stop. By the time I'd stopped the vehicle. I'd already gone 100 k's across him, probably about 80 k's an hour, and um, probably hit his head. He might have even survived because you can survive being run over by uh, rubber car, rubber tyres. I've heard that people people have had their foot run over by buses and not felt it. Um, so maybe he survived, but that crack on the head, I think it would have hurt him quite a bit. 
and I felt so bad and, and uh, I didn't want to go back because I, I, I thought either he's dead or, or he's really hurt and he's, he'd probably bite me or something so I just didn't want, I wouldn't know what to do with him even if he was alive and I was, so anyway I, I probably should have done some sort of medical aid or, or something to him but um, I was afraid to go back and have a look at what, what might have might have become of him. Bit of a chicken old old AFAB. Bit of a chicken. Um, so this is that beautiful car. And I haven't hit anyone or anything else. So that's good news at least. Um, but uh, I am always very careful. And you know, I don't drive during the day. That's the thing. I don't drive during the night, I mean. Uh, and that night I was driving during the night. So it was the only time I drove through the night because I, I, it's a selfish reason actually, I don't want to hit a kangaroo because he would just go through my windscreen and I'd be up for all sorts of damage and stuff so it's sort of uh, a selfish motive why I don't, it's not because I want to protect the animals, I don't want to wreck my car because uh, I can't really afford but the other thing is that you know if you drive during the day there's no animals but early in the morning or all through the night they are just free to roam, they're all over the place so I don't try, I try and to try to avoid uh, going anywhere at night I find myself a safe place and um, camp out for the night so that's a gorgeous car that you know and love and it's a it's I keep calling it a car it's a home and it's a van but I keep calling it a car you know why I keep calling it a car because of the advantage it's small but it's very practical I've got it I've got a seat you know a lot of people put a double bed in the back and I could have done that too they put a double bed in the back and that would I could use that see that box there that drawer thing could be a double bed. I could put the fridge in the front and this could be a double bed. All I'd have to do is extend it a little bit and I'd have a double bed. I could put a mattress down there and now I'd have a really comfortable double bed. But it would be really tight and nowhere to sit with what I, the configuration I've got now is, is perfect because I've got this sort of sofa situation where you know, I can be in the van, I can even cook in here, I could cook eggs or cook, cook uh, or make myself a coffee in the van and close the door if it's raining or if I just want to be alone and you know, maybe there's just too many people around and you don't feel comfortable sort of spreading out. Um, so that's, that's, I think it's perfect what I've got there. You know, I'm not trying to be, uh, I'm not trying to have a double bed, so, um, but, uh, Here's, some, here's a shot of me fridge. Waters, of course. Must have waters. And I had one of these. Oh, you should have these. These are actually made in Turkey. Imported from Turkey. And it was a whole... There's only two, two large peppers in here. And what they do is they burn it and take off the skin. And then they ferment it. And it's just chunky and smooth tasting. And it's salty and you get that umami flavour, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And I've still got this left. If anyone wants it, I've gone out of Dobby, so I can't get a refund or, or exchange now. So if anyone wants stag chili dynamite hot, you're welcome to it because I, I would not be interested in consuming this. It, they make it real hot. These are American made. They're American imports. And these are they're fantastic. The meat is just juicy and chunky and um, well cooked. I think the chili really dissolves the, the meat meat fibers and makes it really soft um, but these are really nice the mild one though not these not this dynamite hot um, and I've still got eggs and the water's a good idea which I'll have right now um, I've got my internet there of course couldn't do this with the internet I mean in the in the 90s I had a had a bit of a stint where I got into my car and just went bugger this I can't find work right now and just I've got some money I'm just gonna get in my car and go and I spent spent quite a quite a long time um, uh, uh, in a car, in an uncomfortable car, so that wasn't that nice. But um, this, this is sheer comfort. I, I thoroughly recommend you get yourself a van. Don't get yourself something too big. Like those people, they're probably very comfortable, but you're carrying around your house. I can park in any shopping centre. I can get under in any, you know, those limiters, those height limiters. I can get under any of them. Um, I can park anywhere I like, and. Um, they won't, uh, you know, it's just like a car. It's, it behaves just like a car, except you've got all that space, and it's a house. It's a house. The only thing I'll probably do is eventually get a smaller fridge once, once uh, 
this one falls apart, which it may at some point. Um, it's too big to be carrying around and it's too heavy and but it does freeze. That will if you get nice hot sunny days. And I've had some before I started dieting, uh, before I started fasting, I had some really cold beers out of that fridge. I mean it just when one of these really hot days and you put a slab in and they just get so cold it's unbelievable when you have that first beer and it's just amazing after a long day's drive. Um, but I don't do that anymore. No. I know you might guess that I might, but I don't. I don't have any beers in there. Nope. No beers. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know how long this van will last. I don't know how long um, I'll be trouble free. Um, as long as I keep giving it love and, and respect, it will keep going, I guess. But um, I can't fear it. When the problems start coming, I've got to face them head on and um, fix them and keep going. March on. March on indeed. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.